Robert Allen here. Thanks, everybody, for watching and listening. We're chatting Godfather of Harlem, a brand new season on MGM Plus, formerly Epix, uh, branding change. And we're chatting with one of the stars, Elvis Delasco, Mr. Pettigrew. Such a great show starring Forrest Whitaker and just a top-notch all-around cast. Elvis, thank you for your time today. I appreciate it. Oh, man, thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Yes. Well, <laughs> I don't even know where to start. This show is just phenomenal. And there have been a couple iterations of this, but this version, I feel, uh, delves into the life and the people of this story of Bumpy Johnson in, in a different sort of way. Um, let's talk about this. You're back for another season how does it feel to be back to bring this character to the screen and to have people be able to watch this very important and very well written story? No, absolutely. It, uh, I'm honored. It's a pleasure. I'm uh, grateful to be back for this third season, which is a really phenomenal season. Um, the writing is just impeccable, and the storyline and where Bumpy's journey is is going in this third season. Uh, to try to do his best to continue to control, hold, and power of Harlem. And, uh, you know, it just really gives you a strong sense that this man is on this journey to, uh, you know, a man who did 11 years in prison, you know, a man who is involved in the underworld, uh, a man who studied philosophy, read so many important books. Um, but, it's, but, but he's very well aware that, that, this is the only thing that he really has. And this is the only thing that he really, really can say, I own this or I can control this. And, and in this space, I am somebody. I am Bumpy Johnson. So in this third season, you will see as we navigate episode through episode that when obstacles are being presented, you know, uh, as always the tactical, you know, with Bumpy Johnson is figuring out ways and means <laughs> to, to control and to continue to to do what he does what he does best. Yeah, I think there's that, but it's just so smartly written. And of course, your portrayal of this iconic character uh, is so real and it's very visceral. Now there, again, as I mentioned, there was the film, and then there's been other documentaries and that sort of thing. When you were approached with the project, what was your end, so to speak, to create this character and have him coexist uh, in a world, as as you mentioned earlier, with somebody who is so powerful and, and had so much control and so much reach in, in a world that some maybe, you know, may or may not be familiar with prior to watching this? Good question. Um, when I was first presented with this amazing opportunity of playing uh, Nat Pettigrew, who uh, was a real live uh, person in the 50s and in the 60s, and Nat Pettigrew, along with a core group of other uh, close uh, affiliates uh, that in Bumpy's world were almost a family. And Nat Pettigrew happened to be one of these guys. And um, when I first got the job, you know, I, of course, I, I did some research. I tried to dig up as much information as I, as I can uh, or could. And um, there wasn't much. There wasn't much uh, information out there. I mean, think about it. These, these folks live, you know, in the underworld. We're in the 50s and 60s. We didn't have, you know, the media and Google. No and social media, <laughs> no internet, <laughs> nothing. So... <laughs> Being they live, they live the life they live. Of course, there wasn't much information on that pedigree, but there was one image I, I found, and uh, you know, and so the beautiful thing about this is working with Chris Brancato and, and Paul Eckstein and Marquand Smith and uh, Forrest Whitaker, all you know, executive producers, and Nina Yan Van Jovi. You know, when when I was presented with the job, you know, I knew that we would. We were we were we were uh, portraying characters that were real, but then again, we had uh, some freedom, some creative license to to be able to um, enhance and bring these characters to the present, to the time of the 60s, 63, 64, 65, etc. So you know, it, I'm grateful that Chris 
allow me some some of that flexibility. So, you know, one of the flexibilities was Nat Pettigrew's hair. <laughs> you know, uh, the real Nat Pettigrew did not wear a press and curl. Uh, but, it, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> but it was something that it, it, it made sense, you know, to the show, to the time, to the period, to uh, honoring, you know, uh, Harlem. And 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 the style and and the look of the time and and also you know Nat Pettigrew's uh, wardrobe you know was something also that I was uh, given uh, some freedom and and to be able to uh, and then there's more um, there's more creative license that you will see and the audience will see when it comes to Nat Pettigrew in, in season three. I love it. And one of the things that I feel is important about this story, well, there's a lot of things, especially in a time where content is so accessible for people you're you're because there's no social media then no internet you know other than maybe what historians may have documented later who felt it important to to put in the history books about these people uh these characters and these real life people um is that you're portraying them in a very honest way in a human way multi-dimensional not just as perhaps somebody that existed in the underworld that may or may have not been up to nefarious activity, but real human beings. Um, when you're looking at projects like this and others, is that important to you as a storyteller? Because you've done some huge things uh, to be able to make sure that characters are portrayed in a real and honest, transparent way versus like maybe a one-dimensional character that we might just know a little bit about and it's sort of the narratives driven uh, in a different way without the creative license, as you mentioned. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, and again, really, really great questions. When you ask that question, it just brings me back to uh, portraying, you know, Carter Nix in American Crime with John Ridley and yeah. the, the journey of that character, uh, who was a character that was dealing with uh, uh, mental illness, you know, uh, drug abuse. Um, and just an outcast, a person that, did, that really didn't feel comfortable in his own skin and didn't feel like he felt uh, comfortable outside in the world. Um, so yeah, it, it's it's been it's been an interesting journey as an actor to be able to play these characters that are flawed, uh, to play these characters that that have a a, a message, they have an internal emotional um, uh, a message, or uh, or want to convey a lot of the uh, issues that we may deal with in, in, in today's society. So as an artist, as an actor, I, I really appreciate characters like that. Even Popple the mayor, and she's got to have it. You know, this is a, a war vet, you know, who is uh, also an artist who is dealing with, with PTSD from, you know, the war, but it's an amazing human being who the whole neighborhood loves. But as, as you mentioned, the three-dimensional aspect of the characters and you know that's the beautiful thing about what we're doing here in Godfather of Harlem, where you have you know characters like Mamie, you know, played by the amazing you know Elfin and Shadera, and you have characters like Elise, you know, played by Antoinette uh, Crow a Legacy, and and even Catherine Narduc Narducci's character, you know, um, playing uh, Mrs. Uh, Gigante. You have these characters, man, that, you know, whether they uh, male or female characters, they really have a, and, and kudos to the writers, Michael Payne's and Chris Moncaro and Paul Eckstein. Uh, they really have been able to uh, create these characters that the audience is being able to follow through, embrace. And, and, and a lot of it is like you pointed out, it's, it's, it's characters that you see their flaws, you know, but you also see their ambitions. You also see uh, where they're right, where they're wrong. Um, but you also see these strong characters, especially in the female aspect of the show. Yes. And that's, I think for me, as somebody who consumes content on a regular basis, very frequently, I look to get hooked on things, hopefully immediately. And sometimes that does or doesn't happen. But when the writing is so good and the storytelling and, and locations are just perfect, it's very easily to get connected uh, and we find ourselves rooting for everybody, regardless of where, 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 or where not their story might be going. It's very cool too that you mentioned that you do get creative license on this. Does that carry over to the writing portion as well, or is it mostly just stay with the character development, like you said, or perhaps costume, hair, all of that? Yeah, it's a, it's an interesting uh, 
it's an interesting way the way uh, you, you start a character, especially for Nat Pettigrew. You start a character in the first season, and um, you know, <laughs> I have a I I. I have a very respectful way of doing it, you know? So if something sure. feels something feels right, you know, something feels right, then you know what? I'll just throw it out there, you know? Um, and and then, you know, the directors or, or the, you know, the folks who are in the village, you know, looking at the monitor, especially the director, he'll come back and he'll be like, you know what, keep that. You know, That's keep cool. That. It wasn't in there, but keep that. That makes sense, it felt right. Um, so in, in that aspect, uh, I think, but also in the aspect of, as we continue to grow as 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 a team, uh, as a as a as a show that that just has so much to offer, and and the weaving of the of the underworld with the civil rights movement, as we continue to grow, we see that these characters are also you know growing. So a lot of it, yes, it, it might be my input, whatever I feel spontaneously in the moment. Um, but a lot of it is just the progression of moving forward episode by episode, you know, season by season. So it, it's a it's a really great uh, collaboration all around. I can't wait to see where you take this story. It's just so fascinating. I, I recommend this to everybody. Uh, even I'm like, you have to see this show. It's just so good. One last question, Elvis and there are a lot of different things, a lot of different themes, topics that you address uh, in this film that are relevant now, not necessarily just relevant in the late 60s, but as a storyteller, and it may be beyond your jurisdiction, but I always like to ask, is there one message or two messages that you hope that the audience gleans from the telling of Bumpy Johnson, uh, Bumpy Johnson, and of course your character as well. That you go, hey, this is important, and I think people uh, who are watching this who may or may not be historically familiar with the character or Harlem or whatever, like something that's important to you that you want people to grasp onto. Um, that's a very very good question. I think the first thing that comes to mind for me is really looking at that time period of the 60s, really looking at, you know, uh, the assassination of Kennedy, the assassination of Robert F. Kennedy, and moving forward, and, you know, Dr. Martin Luther King and, and the civil rights movement and, and Woodstock. I mean, it's, it's a very uh, interesting time in our, in our lives, you know, that whole decade, you know, even up till 69 when you have Woodstock. So, what I see and what I feel and what I hope that the message or what I, what I feel that people can take away from is that, you know, it, it, we, it, it seems like looking at today's time, you know, the present time and, and the times that we are in that, you know, pardon, pardon that. Uh, can you hear that? Is that a distraction? Nope, you're totally fine. <laughs> um, Go ahead. So it, it's, it's that history repeats itself, you yeah. know, and that even though we feel that we have progressed a lot and have moved the needle, um, that in so many ways, uh, when we still look at, you know, when we look at 2020 and 2021, 2022, and, and all the different uh, wrongful killings, you know, that has happened in, in, in so many communities, we, we look at that and we look at a, a show like Godfather of Harlem, and I think it's, it's kind of reminding a little bit folks that, you know, um, times have changed, but a lot of things we still need to work on as, as, a, as, a, as a society, you know, and, and like, I don't want to be the poster child for, <laughs> you know, uh, and I'm sure we as, you know, in Godfather Harlem, we, we want to be artists and we want to continue to remain in the space of being creative and, and, and creating art. But yes, when you do look at the uh, parallels, yeah. then I feel that it's 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 beautiful and I think it's good to be able to remind people that we we still have a lot of work to do 100 percent. well congratulations on all your success I've been a fan of your work for a very long time I mean we could sit here for a long time and talk about some of these no. iconic projects that you've been a part of you've mentioned a few but I, I, have, uh, I have nothing but time, Brett. <laughs> I know. Um, well, we'll have you come back another time and we'll we'll delve in deeper to your really, really long uh, filmography and televisionography as well. But this is available to watch and stream on MGM Plus, formerly Epix. Uh, when do we get new episodes next? Uh, every Sunday. 
9 p.m. Uh, on MGM Plus, formerly known as uh, Epics. Um, so yeah, every Sunday, tune in, and uh, you know you can catch the first two seasons. You know uh, uh, we can binge that on on Hulu or Amazon Prime, and uh, it, it, yeah, you won't you won't be let down. It's, it's definitely a, a wonderful ride, and you know, and, and really quick, you know, one of the things we had a premiere in, in New York, and it was a beautiful premiere because it was done for the people of Harlem and it was provided by MGM plus and to be able to see a lot of folks in the theater on 125th Street and Frederick Douglass Boulevard wow. coming to see this and to hear and to talk to the to the to the people and it, it just almost felt like this was Bumpy's if if Bumpy was here today that's what he would you know be doing giving back to his community so it, it felt that way and uh the people really applaud the writing and 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 the performances to cast. So, don't you know, tune in. We got more yeah, surprise in epics, not epics, epics. Yes, and he uh, would probably be there handing out concessions and uh, promoting it himself. Well, thank you, Elvis. It was a pleasure meeting you and chatting with you this afternoon. Thank you for your graciousness and your time. Ah, uh, thank you so much for your time and patience, and I appreciate you very much. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Absolutely, thank you. All right.